Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Gland Bodybuilding. Mountain. And today I'm going to talk to you uh, about a few different things that you might not have tried yet in order to isolate muscles or to bring up some weak body parts. And one of these techniques is the dog's breakfast workout. And I commonly do this. Uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> I always talk about instinctual training and people talk about instinctual training all the time, how it's an effective sort of thing, but some people don't have instincts. So how could they do it, right? You know, they're, they're out of touch with their body, so they don't know uh, what would be instinctually good. But one way you could see in your own body what, what might benefit from training is first, is if you have a body part that is not necessarily adapting based on your present workout program. So if you see that, you know, you're training and you have a few really lagging body parts, you know, they're, they're tough to isolate and you're having a real hard time uh, bringing them up. Well, chances are maybe an extra workout on there, assuming that these body parts aren't sore and already exhausted and so forth. But assuming that's, that's the case, including them in a dog's breakfast type workout might be a good thing. You know, so once a week you would pick a workout and you would just work on the body parts that still seem like they need more work because they're not sore, they're not tight, they're not fatigued. And at the same time, you know, you might have a double hit combo going on here, kind of like Killer Instinct, right? Well, come on, come on. You might have a double hit combo where the muscle is not only fully recovered, but at the same time, it's also lagging behind, like it's a weak body part of some sort. Now, the reason why the dog's breakfast workout is a great thing to do is that you can start to isolate the muscle through different and creative ways without feeling like you're deviating from your main workout program. You know, we all have that main workout program where we have to do the bench press, the squat, you know, the deadlift, whatever, the, the main foundational lifts. And sometimes when you are in a program, it's almost like there's this, uh, this fear around missing out, like you're not doing the main tried and true and tested exercises so somehow you're you're not going to get results or you're going to you're going to lose results so by incorporating one of these random workouts from time to time you're basically inviting yourself to experiment and to try new angles to try new ways of isolating the muscle and there's going to be certain muscle groups that are hard to isolate in anybody but if you have a specific type of injury uh, that can also exasperate the problem. So I, I've experienced this with a dislocation shoulder. I've experienced this with uh, the bicep issue. You know, I've experienced this because life happens sometimes outside of the gym when you're playing sports or whatever, you might injure yourself. And then now the body doesn't seem to respond the same as it did before the injury. And you have to become more creative. Sometimes, you know, a standard movement would be just a movement around the elbow to include the bicep or the tricep, but maybe after injuring the shoulder, maybe there has to be a little bit more shoulder movement or less shoulder movement in order to isolate that muscle. And these dog's breakfast type workouts will allow you to experiment. Now, the other thing you can do is super short range of motion movements in certain circumstances to try to isolate a muscle. Like today, I did dips off of a bar in the squat rack and all I did was this. I was just working the pec minor. I was just pushing down like a glorified dip, but I wasn't using any elbow bend or extension. I was just purely just doing this, just playing around. And my pec minor actually got a really good burn from that. And, and that could be something that can produce results, even though it looks like a dumb movement, right? And then to further that, I would fatigue this way first, and then I would include super short dips just to work the tricep and isolate the tricep and the pec without bringing in the shoulder so much that I feel when I, when I go down deeper and lift, right? So, so what works will depend on what's happening in your body in any one given time. And sometimes you have to get creative or, you know, uh, look a little bit dumb, you know, trying certain types of ways or angles of attack. So the neat part about this is that it refreshes your excitement around the workout. And sometimes you produce these really exciting results because like I said, the muscles that are not necessarily getting stimulated that often, if you find a way to stimulate them, you can go through massive shifts in growth really quickly, as opposed to just doing the same thing over and over again, right? So you're, you're trying to find out where is the best 
profit margin, you know, for muscle mass. You know, what is the best effort versus return? And in some of these uncharted areas or these unstimulated areas, that's where you can get the most amount of results. So yeah, play around with that. Once a week or once every two weeks or something, do a dog's breakfast type workout where you just play around with the weaker body parts or the body parts that feel like they just have not been stimulated enough and experiment with the ranges of motion, experiment with the technique you use and the exercises, and you might stumble across something that produces unexpected fruit. Mountain. So yeah, I hope this helps out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patron supporters. There I'm doing a podcast every week and I will see you there. The link is in the description. Mountain.